Happy Teacher Appreciation Week, guys. I have so many giveaways, freebies, promotions for you at the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned. Hey friends, it's Lauren. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be discussing biggest mistakes that I see teachers make when using Canvas LMS. Over the years, I've coached so many educators in Canvas, and these are the common mistakes that I see occur over and over and over again. The good news, of course, is that all of these little issues are easily fixable. So let's go over these five common mistakes, and then I will give you you the solutions to fix them. first mistake that I see happen, and this is usually like for people who are kind of starting out with Canvas, is that they don't utilize modules or they're using them improperly. Modules are essentially like the backbone of Canvas. So if you skip them all together or they are just really chaotic and make no sense, students then kind of become overwhelmed, especially on the navigation side of how to find their educational content. Lastly, and I do see this a lot is they reorder the modules so that instead of going in a linear flow, so like the students are working from the top down, I see a lot of educators actually moving the module, the newest module to the top. And while I understand why educators do this, some issues can arise. So how do we fix these problems? Well, first of all, start using modules and make sure when you're using them that you are consistent with the naming. So decide how you want to use modules. Is a module going to be one week? Is a module gonna be one lesson, one unit, one topic? You decide how you're going to organize them and then name them appropriately and make sure you are consistent as you keep building. So for example, if you're gonna start with week one, the next module better be week two and so on. Now for the reordering, make sure they are in order from oldest module to newest at the bottom. This helps students scroll through content like a timeline. And also modules are kind of like a student checklist. So they're working their way down through the content. And if you're reordering that structure, also keep in mind that requirements and prerequisites kind of get a little bit messy and you can't really utilize that as well. Every single time you create a new module bringing it back up to the top you're creating more work for yourself as the teacher in the long run. Mistake number two that I see occur is that you're using modules, but instead of using like an assignment page and a discussion page or a page of content, I have literally seen teachers, they have one page for every single day of the school year. And within that page are links that go to the assignment and whatever activity they have planned for that day. It might appear like you are being so organized and well structured at first, but you are creating a scrolling nightmare for your students. And what's worse is you're not really utilizing Canvas to its full potential as a learning management system. When your course just becomes essentially pages and pages of link dumps, it starts to function more as a CMS, a content management system, rather than creating an engaging, interactive learning experience for your students, which is why I would say Canvas is better than Google Classroom because Canvas is a true LMS. Google Classroom is more of a CMS. So to fix this, instead of creating daily pages that include all of the links for that day, I would highly suggest creating like a page that is a weekly agenda that instead now lives either like on your homepage or lives within the module that maybe if you're organizing by weeks, it's living at the top of that weekly module. So then from there, you want to build your assignments, discussions, quizzes in the module, right? So we're building that learning experience instead of just providing links that take them to whatever assignment, whatever discussion. You want them to be able to navigate 
pretty easily. Building content in the module aligns with how Canvas was designed to be used for learning, not just content delivery. The third mistake that I see is overcomplicating the homepage. Everyone gets so excited about their Canva buttons that they created and their welcome banners, but when your homepage has 12 different buttons and is using five different fonts and includes eight different colors and is just a bit chaotic visually, students that are going to be using the course are going to be extremely overwhelmed with how to navigate that course. In addition, I've seen buttons are created that already exist in the course navigation. So meaning like in the course navigation, there's a grades option. And then I see a teacher adding the grades button onto their homepage. We don't need it twice. We just need it one time. So to fix this, create and add buttons that act as shortcuts to things that are not available in the course navigation. So this could be like shortcuts to modules, shortcuts to pages that provide important information, maybe like like a parent information page. Another one would maybe be like a weekly agenda page. Those are appropriate buttons that you should create for your homepage. I would say have a header, have buttons that again are shortcuts, include a welcome message, and maybe an agenda and that's it. You don't need to have a lot on the homepage. Your homepage essentially has one job and it's to answer the question of where do I start? If your homepage answers that question, you're doing a good job. Mistake number four that I see is that teachers are creating pages that either have too many visuals or not enough. So either it's a wall of text that makes students glaze completely over the entire page because it's not visually engaging enough, or it's visually overwhelming, meaning there are so many images, the images essentially become a distraction from the actual content. Visual engagement is extremely important for students no matter what age or grade level. So to fix this, use headings, bullet points, and short chunks of text. Make sure all the important information is provided on the page. Stick with two to three visuals and also make sure when you're creating especially content pages like a reading page, make sure the page isn't too long. We're not scrolling forever to get to all the content. The fifth and final mistake that I see happen all the time is not cross-listing. Now, cross-listing doesn't apply to everybody, especially if you are an elementary teacher. This mistake does not necessarily apply to you because you have one class roster and you're teaching multiple and different subjects. This really applies to secondary, like middle school, high school. If you're teaching multiple sections of the same exact course and managing them all separately in Canvas, stop. You're making your life so much harder than it needs to be because you're having to make multiple copies of whatever content you've created over to each of those courses. So if you have six periods of the exact same class, you have to create six different copies of that content. So to fix this, cross list your courses at the start of the semester or quarter, depending upon how your district does rostering. If you are free for teacher's user and you are not cross-listing, I would highly suggest that you do that before you do anything else. It essentially merges your rosters. It still has all the different section, but now all of those sections are in a master course. So you're creating content once and you don't have to copy it over to all the other courses. And I just want to emphasize this. Make sure when you are cross-listing, you do that first and then you start building content because if you cross-list a course after building that content, you could easily lose it. All right, so let's do a recap. Number one, modules. Make sure you're using modules. Make sure you are organizing your modules. Number two, ditch the daily page link dumps. Number three, simplify your homepage. Number four, clean up your content pages so that they are visually engaging for students. And number five, cross list those courses. And now I am so excited to talk about my 
Teacher Appreciation Week giveaways. So the first one being, I have a webinar training that I sell on my Teachers Pay Teacher store. Starting today until the end of this week. So I'm actually going to extend it. Originally, I was just gonna have it till Friday, but I'm gonna actually move it until Sunday. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to offer that webinar training completely for free for you. So if you're a Canvas newbie or you know that your school is switching to Canvas next year, or maybe you've been using Canvas for a while and you just want to sharpen up your skills, that webinar training is going to be completely free for you until Sunday of this week. Additionally, if you want even more training, I just launched a performance-based Canvas course. So instead of just watching me do stuff, this actually requires you to perform. So you have to master a skill in order to move on to like the next lesson. So that course right now until Friday is going to be 50% off. So if you want to check that out, that is going to be in the description linked below. Lastly, I just want to say that I have a few more giveaways and promotions I'm giving coffee away. So if you want more information about that and the other kind of promotions I have going on for Teacher Appreciation Week, click the link below in the description and follow me on Instagram and you guys will be able to maybe get a free coffee on me. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and happy Teacher Appreciation Week. Make sure to check out all of my giveaways linked below in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!